Welcome into Sports Moments Betting Podcast for September 16th. It's NFL opening line report. That means Teddy covers. The heavy hitter is in. Teddy, happy Monday morning to you. Hey, uh, happy Monday. And it is a happy Monday, Drew. So that's always good to say when we can go happy Monday and it actually is <laughs> a good day. You know, a uh, good weekend uh, overall. And uh, hopefully uh, the clients were able to cash in. Hopefully if you're out there in uh, listener land, you had a good uh, weekend as well. But uh, yeah, nothing but smiles here on a Monday morning. Absolutely, man. And uh, I know why. 20 and 11, 65%. All football this year, that's NFL and NCAA combined. That's 65% start to the season. And my favorite stat, Teddy, 183 and 129. That's 59% NFL since 2015. That's over four years going, man. That's a great long-term streak there in the NFL. I don't know if there's many people at all better than that. So hats off to you, and uh, it's good that you're keeping it going this season, man. Seeing it well. We got a Monday nighter tonight. Cleveland at the New York Jets. Um, this is one that I, I know you had a strong opinion on, so I'll just throw it over to you, man. What are you seeing here, Browns versus the Jets? Yeah, I mean, I put out a, a five percenter uh, on this play, a big ticket on Cleveland last Wednesday when the line was two and a half on the Browns, and I loved Cleveland at that price. It was a game that I thought they were going to win. I uh, was worried about the Jets' defensive injuries. Uh, you know, Mosley Williams both out. Uh, for tonight's game and then of course Sam Darnold got mono the line went from two and a half to six and a half and you know we did the right thing at sports memo which is you pull down the play yeah it was a great bet at two and a half at six and a half even with Simeon not as good a bet and so I'm not trying to sell a play that people can't get at the current line with information that's no longer valid if you got down to two and a half like I did I I, I held that bet I'm, I'm at no interest in buying back on the Jets uh whatsoever uh, but at the current number, uh, you know, you don't love the game anywhere near the way you loved it, uh, you know, laying less than a field goal. Uh, the, you know, there is a drop off from Darnold to Simeon, but Simeon got the job because he was a, he had a winning record in Denver as a starting QB. And uh, I, I don't think he's hopeless uh, for the Jets in that role. So I'm going to hold my two and a half. Uh, and at the current Lions, I'm not involved. Uh, six and a half and uh, 45, 45 and a half uh, to me. That's those are appropriate numbers for this game. And, and Teddy, just a follow up question on that. I, I like your breakdown on Simeon because I agree with you. I mean, you watch the guy throw the ball. He's a he can he's a talented passer. The, the, the you know he can really spin it. The, the the question is, you know, from two and a half to six and a half, how much of that is you know due to the quarterback injury in your mind, and how much of it is you know the Browns being the right side in an overall handicap? Well, I mean, the markets have made a four point adjustment essentially. Uh, off of that move but again a four point adjustment from you know 16 and a half to 12 and a half isn't the same as a four point adjustment from two and a half to six and a half you know you're plowing you're plowing through uh key numbers right. <laughs> with the, you know the three four and six uh obviously to get to uh uh six and a half so um did i i don't know if i answered your question um yeah i i guess you, so, so pretty much all four points you're saying are due to the quarterback change not not due to yes. you, you know, overall money just coming in on Cleveland. Correct. That, that that's that's my assessment. Was that the you know it was a oh, they pulled it off the board. It was two and a half. Mine was two and a half minus fifteen. Two and a half minus twenty. But it was still sitting at two and a half. And when it came back, it was six and a half. And that's all just the QB injury. Okay. All right. Good stuff, Teddy. And uh, next game up, I guess uh, Thursday nighter. This is the NFL opening line report talking about uh, where these numbers are going to go. Get Teddy's thoughts on it. We got a uh, division matchup here: Tennessee at Jacksonville. Seeing a total of 40, and the line seems to be one and a half or two. That's the Titans laying on the road against Jacksonville. And uh, a, a somewhat new quarterback here, man. Uh, the Washington State Cougars look good out of the gate. What are you thinking here, Teddy? Yeah, uh, well, yes and no. I mean, uh, so let's start with this. The concept with the opening line report is not necessarily to fully handicap these games. It's to talk about what the markets are reacting to and what you want to bet now versus what you want to hold off and bet later in the week. All right, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to give you the look-ahead line for every game. This is a bettable line from last week, and there are multiple books that are doing this now. I continue to use the uh, numbers from the Westgate Superbook here in Vegas. Uh, they're the numbers I've been following on look-ahead lines for forever, basically. So the fact that other books are doing it now, uh, I'm still going to track the Westgate numbers, and I'm also going to give you my power rating number. 
for this game. And this one's real simple. The look ahead line was one and a half. My powering number is two. The current market is one and a half or two. And I don't see this line moving a whole lot. We did see the total get popped off the opener to the under. You know, we've seen some ugly Thursday night football thus far. Uh, and the 41s at the opener really got bet down 40 right now. But I don't see that going lower. Uh, leading indicator books are already saying 40 is low enough between the Titans and the Jaguars. All right, Teddy, we got uh, Sunday's action. Denver at Green Bay, seeing the Packers. Pretty much uh, consensus eight-point favorites at home. Westgate showing a 7.5 as well as South Point. 43 or 43.5 the total, Teddy? Yeah, I mean, Penny's still at 7.5. Grande's at 7.5. We can call it 7.5 or 8 there. Uh, that's the way I wrote it down. The look ahead line here was Green Bay minus 6.5. My poverty number has Green Bay a minus nine and a half. And now, you know, it's it's two weeks with Denver and the defense that was supposed to be all that isn't all that. I mean, that's pretty good. Did they get a sack? I, I don't think they got a sack yesterday. They got at least got a hurry and a pressure. Uh, but, uh, oh, yeah, the, well, <laughs> they got a sack and then it turned out that I was roughing the passer. Uh, <laughs> but the pass rush hasn't been there uh, for the Broncos. And the strength of that team's supposed to be defense. It's not there. Uh, you know, Green Bay's defense has been pretty good. A lot of concerns for me, at least. You know, the Packers go up 21 nothing in that game and then were very fortunate to end up victorious. Uh, they fell asleep with the lead, and Minnesota you know, shot themselves in the foot 15 different times uh, with chances. But, you know, on the one hand, Green Bay was the right side there. On the other hand, you know, it's two weeks in a row for the Packers where that offense is very hit or miss, not necessarily going to be an easy team for the markets to lay points with. I'm expecting some under money in this one. We're already seeing a little bit of it. I wouldn't be surprised if we see more 43 and a half the current total. If you like the under, I bet that's sooner rather than later. Next game up, Teddy, we got Detroit at Philadelphia. 48 being the total with the Eagles laying seven at home. Yeah, look ahead line, Eagles minus seven and a half. My powering line, Eagles minus nine. The market's now at seven and 48. Big injury concerns for Philadelphia uh, at the wide receiver uh, position. Uh, I'm just looking to see what the latest is right now. Deshaun Jackson's a question mark. Alshon Jeffrey uh, is a question mark. You know, now they've got some in- injuries on the defensive line as well with Jernigan out. Uh, so, you know, Philly, without their playmakers on offense last night, the offense was a little pedestrian uh, when all was uh, said and done uh, for the Eagles. Uh, that being, and, and the, you know, there's clear wise guy support for Detroit now in the markets. And I'll tell you, the markets like the Lions defense. And yes, Detroit, I'm not going to, they, they weren't even close to being a right side in their win uh, over the Chargers yesterday. But the defense, when they had to, made play after play after play in the red zone, forcing pick Darius Slay, you know, on a terrible ball by uh, Phillip Rivers in field goal range already to tie the game uh, against the game ceiling interception. There is market support for this Lions defense. This total has potential to go down. Uh, I don't think it gets below seven for Philly. It could, depending on the injury situation uh, with their receivers. But total-wise, this one's going down. If you want some under, again, that's one to get on early as opposed to waiting. Yeah, I like it. I like where you're going with that. I mean, it's already moved a little bit here, Teddy. Plus the fact, what, Philadelphia was just on Sunday night football. You bring up the fact of of the wide receiver kind of injuries, but uh, Wentz didn't look good at all, did he? No. I mean, the offensive line, I mean, number one, let's give Atlanta's defense some credit. The Falcons' defense got gashed week one, and the Falcons' defense played much better last night. Uh, Much, much better. Uh, I thought Wentz was okay. I didn't think he was brilliant. I didn't think he was back to his MVP form of uh, two years ago. Uh, was that two years ago? Yeah. Was that yeah, three? Well, yeah, yeah, it was two years yeah, yeah, before he got hurt. Uh, but uh, it's certainly not a situation where I'm going to downgrade Philly because Wentz has been mediocre thus far. If I'm downgrading Philly, it's because the receivers are hurt. Okay. All right, makes sense. We got Baltimore at KC up next. Chiefs laying six and a half, 55 the total. Look ahead line was Kansas City minus six. My powering number is Kansas City minus seven and a half. And let's, on the one hand, we got to tap the brakes on the Ravens a little bit, you know, because they played, uh, again, based on my power, they played the two worst teams in the NFL the first two weeks uh, in Miami and Arizona. And this will be the first, quote unquote, you know, real team uh, that they uh, play, certainly with a real offense. Um, And we know that the broader markets aren't going to like Kansas City. Kansas City's got some dicey defensive numbers. And again, 
Uh, the scoreboard said 28 to 10 at the end of Oakland. If you watch the game, you know the Raiders moved the ball up and down the field against KC's defense. And one would think that perhaps, uh, you know, Lamar Jackson uh, might be able to do uh, the same thing. Um, there's, you know, this is going to be a sharp square divide game. I'll tell you that right now, though. The, the pros are going to be on Baltimore plus. The Joes are going to be on Kansas City minus. Um, and you don't often see Ravens totals of 55. <laughs> that one sort of stood out like a sore thumb. Although it was nothing but over money for KC last week, and the over never even uh, sniffed in that ball game. But uh, where is this number going? I don't think it's going up. I don't think it's going down. I think it stays right here at six and a half. This is not an alert emergency line move, and not one where you're dying to get to the window. If you like KC, not going to hurt you to lock in at the six and a half here. You're going to gain more with that wager if the line goes to seven than you'll lose if it goes back down to six. All right, Teddy, we got this. We got Cincinnati at Buffalo up next, seeing the Bills laying five and a half or six, 43 and a half the total. And, Teddy, this is the Bills' first home game, but also the third straight game where they're playing in the state of New York. Do you think there's any advantage to uh, practice time or anything like that going into this one? Not necessarily. Um, I mean, you know, it's a, it's a very different part of New York. Uh, they had an edge playing back-to-back games at MetLife, but, you know, playing a – in Buffalo, it's, it's a, a different story. And the Bills, you know, we think about Buffalo having a home field edge. Their home field edge has been minimal uh, in our recent seasons, and that may well be the case this year. Uh, look headline here was Buffalo minus four and a half. My powering number is Buffalo minus seven uh, and a half. So I'm a little bit higher on the Bills and a little bit lower on the Bengals uh, than the market right now. That paid off for me yesterday. Uh, we cashed an easy ticket going against uh, Cincinnati, and that one was, you know, rocking chair. Uh, with San Fran, it was a done deal by halftime uh, where the 49ers moved the ball like, you know, a hot knife through butter uh, against that Bengals defense. I'm not convinced that gets a whole lot better. And I'm telling you, Zach Taylor, I don't like him so far. And the first year head coaches, he's the one that stood out to me as being the ass clown of the bunch. Um, I could, would anticipate there's already been some Buffalo money. Uh, like I said, my powering number is a good notch too high, and I wouldn't be shocked at all to see the Bills be a fairly popular choice for betters this week. The sixes are already popping up. Maybe it goes higher. He's Teddy covers 59% in the NFL since 2015. That's over four years hitting near 60% in the NFL and 65% start to the college and NFL season this year. Hot out the gate. And you guys can jump on a huge discount here for the podcast. That's sportsmemo.com. If you use the coupon code TC. 795 that's TC as in Teddy covers but just TC 795 at checkout for his college football NFL full season combo package it will take an extra $300 off we just counted dis- dis- discounted it $200 this morning to 1095 and with this coupon code it will take an extra 300 bucks off so 500 bucks off total TC 795 huge discounts there at sportsmemo.com teddy covers great choice the best choice in college football and nfl we got atlanta at indianapolis up next we got the falcons catching two and a half on the road 47 and a half the total teddy yeah look ahead line was indy minus one my powering number indy minus three this one two and a half three and I feel like I should get, like, this is your emergency betting alert. I feel like this number's going to three. You know, we've already seen a couple of threes pop up. If you like Indy, get the two and a half now. You know, maybe it comes back. Maybe the markets hold here. But it it sure feels like a three. And it's not like Atlanta solved their problems last night or answered a ton of questions uh, with the win uh, over Philly. You know, they still had issues in the red zone. They still had issues with protecting Matt Ryan. Um and if it wasn't for a, a heck of a play call, <laughs> you know, talk about the perfect play call uh, on an all-out blitz, getting the ball to Julio Jones on the outside and, and uh, you know, left tackle coming out to uh, block the cornerback and Jones is off to the races and Atlanta gets the win in cover. But that didn't answer my questions about the Falcons. And I'll tell you what, there's some things to like about Andy. Now, the kicker's not one. I don't know what they're going to do with Vinatieri, and this is an issue. Uh, you know, when it's back-to-back games with a 46-year-old kicker who's missing extra points and missing field goals, you know, what does Indy do in that spot? Um, that's worth noting. But I do think this line is going to get to three across the board. I wouldn't be shocked at all if it does that today. So uh, if you like the Colts, that's one that I would get involved with sooner rather than later.
Okay, and Teddy, I mean, also Atlanta had some kicker issues, or punter issues, excuse me, with, uh, I believe, Bosher. Seemed like he was uh, having some trouble punting the ball for Atlanta, so interesting kind of tidbit there for the handicapping in that game. We got Oakland at Minnesota up next. Vikings laying 8, 42 or 42 and a half being the total, Teddy. Yeah, look headline here was Minnesota minus 7.5. My party number is Minnesota minus 8.5. The markets right now are at 8. They could well go to 8.5. Uh, wouldn't shock me. A couple of books are already moving uh, in that direction right now. Uh, and, you know, from an opener of 7, 7.5, it's clear that there's market support for Minnesota uh, and market uh, disrespect for Oakland. Um, you know, again, the Vikings uh, mis- somewhat misleading final score. They were the better team for the final three quarters against Green Bay yesterday. They dominated week one, and they, when you talk about strong home fields in the NFL, Minnesota has one, and of course it's going to be a West Coast team traveling east for an early start game. The markets hate that, so you can't anticipate the Vikings' money to continue to trickle in. No rush if you're waiting to bet the Raiders. And Teddy, we got uh, what AFC East battle up next, limited marketplace with the New York Jets at the New England Patriots, 46 and a half or 47 seen out there in the market for the total and 17, 17 and a half. That's the Pats laying at home. Look ahead line was uh, Patriots minus 13. I believe that's a Sam Darnold line, however. Uh, my number with no Darnold, 17 and a half, which is right where the markets are right now. And again, that will be a very limited marketplace today with lower limits uh, because the Jets play on Monday uh, night of football. I'll tell you this, the under is likely to take a fair bit of money in that game right from the opener when Jets Patriots open. Everyone knows that New England's an under team right now. Uh, and don't be fooled by how close that game was yesterday to getting up on over the total. That only happened because... Uh, the Patriots scored two defensive touchdowns, which maybe they're capable of doing. Uh, but that under is likely to take some uh, attract some betting attention. Teddy, next game up, a, a fascinating handicap going forward, talking about the Miami Dolphins at the Dallas Cowboys with the Cowboys laying 21 in Jerry's world, 47.5 the total. So I have the Dolphins five points below uh, my number 31 team right now. That's where the markets are uh, on Miami. But no, the markets are even higher than that. Because my power number is 18 and a half, and I got the Cowboys pretty high. Uh, look at line here was 15 and a half. Uh, but, I mean, the the market the markets are really struggling to attract any Miami money. There was, the, you know, the wise guys came in and bought some uh, Dolphins Plus at the end. There was even some public Dolphins money at the end, you know. Uh, so, um, and da- here's the interesting thing, though. Dallas, you know, scored five touchdowns in a row week one. I had five scoring drives in a row again week two. They uh, were settled for one field goal, but nine touchdowns, one field goal uh, in, in, a, you know, in, in a row where the, once that offense is clicking, boom, 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 boom. Uh, it's been marching up and down the field. And Miami's defense isn't offering – I mean, they offered some resistance against New England. They kind of ran out of gas after Fitzpatrick threw his second pick six. <laughs> uh, but the markets will continue to struggle to get money on Miami right now until the Dolphins actually play a competitive game. It's going to be point spreads like this one, which, I mean, to me, is unbackable. I, I, I can't. Dallas, despite scoring all the touchdowns, worth noting in both games, as soon as they were comfortably in control, foots off the gas pedal, no further points, prevent defense. And that's not what I want from a team that's laying 21 points in the NFL. Yeah, I did notice that, especially in their first game, because I was involved with it, Teddy. They really took their foot off the gas pedal against the New York Giants in, in week one. So take that for whatever it's worth here. Also, you know, w- with this 21-point total, any any new sports bettors out there, do you have any advice to them in the NFL with betting these big point spreads? Just because it doesn't happen that often. So is your advice just to kind of stay away or uh, kind of look towards the, go- the the dog here, or with a team that hasn't been competitive, keep riding this streak and maybe fading the Dolphins until further notice? I want no part of the Miami Dolphins. You make zero money in the NFL betting on the very worst teams. You make zero money in college football betting on the very worst teams. And the wise guys, quote-unquote sharp money, that comes in and says, oh, look at the value here. Look at the value on the Dolphins plus 20 at home against my, uh, New England. What happened to them is going to happen to them. All right, Miami stinks. You cannot make money betting Miami unless the Dolphins get better, and I haven't seen anything that indicates the Dolphins are going to get better. This is a team that is dead, a dead team walking in week two. And, you know, uh, so my advice to be for newbies, when you see a three-touchdown spread in the NFL, 
It's not necessarily uh, unless there's a real reason to bet against the favorite. <laughs> it's not a spot where you want the underdog. Great stuff, Teddy, as always. Guys, this is the NFL Opening Line Report podcast. We will be doing this each and every Monday throughout football season. He's Teddy Coverage. You can follow him on Twitter at Teddy underscore Covers. I'm Drew Martin on Twitter at Drew Martin Betts. Got a few games left here on the Sunday slate. New York Giants at the Tampa Bay Bucks. Looks like six and a half in Tampa Bay. 48 the total, Teddy. Well, at least this week they put five late games and uh, what do they have? Seven early games. I hate it. I mean, the ten game, the ten early games compared to three late games last week is just ten games at once is too much. You can't follow them all, uh, and it's you know it's like give us some give us give us seven hours of football to watch. Don't give yeah. us three and a what, half. Do, do you know the thinking behind that, Teddy? Like why they do that? It can't be for marketing. Uh, I, I don't think that the NFL has really recognized what the betters mean to their marketplace yet, and maybe they'll get there. You know, I, I think it's just they're just doing it the way they've always done it, and uh, there weren't many teams playing on the West Coast this week, so there aren't many late start games, uh, and that's a fair bit of randomness in that. And maybe the league will look at it so that it's not so random somewhere down the line. Okay, I mean, I, I think uh, they need to have half the games in the early slate, half the games in the night slate. Oh, and by the way, they need to have two Monday nighters each and every week, but. Anyway, I'll let I'll, I'll throw it back to you. Sorry about that. <laughs> uh, so uh, anyhow, uh, what are we looking at? Giants Tampa. Yeah. Uh, so my number the look at line here is Tampa three and a half. My number is only five and a half. You know, I mean the the Giants defense has been god awful through two weeks. God awful. Their offense has shown some signs. Hey, Eli, you know, Eli made a couple of really horrendous throws. You know, like bench him now type of throws. And, then, you know, at halftime, you know, that pick right before halftime, everyone was freaking out about. Uh, and is it really so? Eli Manning is a bottom-tier NFL quarterback at this stage of his career. And the Giants have some talent around him. Uh, they haven't been able to get the ball in their hands. And the defense has been an absolute sieve uh, so far. But Tampa's not an easy team to lay points with. And, you know, does this line get to seven? I don't think it does. But, you know, stranger things have happened. Nevada's got a seven right now. Penny's at six and a half minus 11. Bookmaker six and a half minus fifteen. Maybe it gets there uh, at seven. I'll be looking at the Giants. I'll tell you that flat out right now. Look ahead again, three and a half. And it's not like the Bucks got better or the Giants got worse. Both teams are exactly what we thought they were. At least for me, if you had Tampa plus the points, you know, Carolina was what I thought they were uh, too. Unfortunately, we're talking about them coming up right here. Yeah, and under uh, under a field goal favorites in Arizona, seeing forty six and a half the total. That's the next game up, Teddy. Carolina at Arizona. Yeah, I got Panthers season wins over, and that bet's going to lose, uh, unfortunately. Um, I don't trust them here. Look, headline was Carolina minus three and a half. My powering number is Carolina minus one. The markets are two and a half, three. Um, there was a lot to like about what Arizona did yesterday. And, they're, you know, Kingsbury's taking all this heat for kicking on them field goals. They, and they kicked three field goals from inside the 10-yard line, uh, to which, you know, cost them the win. I couldn't disagree more. You have a young team. Arizona's not a playoff team this year. You have a young quarterback making his first start against an elite defense. You want to get points on the board. And they did that. And the end of the accumulation of all those points made the game interesting in the fourth quarter, which is what Cliff Kingsbury wants for his team. He wants competitive games in the fourth quarter. It's uh, Of course, he wants to win. But a fourth down stop in any of those instances would have been it would have been a momentum change. You're a killer, et cetera, et cetera. You keep the points going on the board. It's a positive sign. Uh, so I, I think Arizona's capable here. And again, at two and a, I, I don't see the broader market necessarily moving to three on this. They might. Uh, you know, there are certainly some concerns about the, the Cardinals on both sides of the football, but Carolina's shown very little in two games and in the preseason to say, you know, this is a team we want to be laying points on the road. I'm a little bit surprised by the market support they're getting today, although this is what will happen in week two. Okay. The markets will support the 0-2 teams, especially against the 2-0 and teams. The markets want the team that's desperate and hungry, not the team that's fat and happy. And you see some bizarre week three line moves because of that very circumstance where the 0-2 team, in theory, is fighting for their season. And the two, uh, you know, the teams with a winning record aren't, aren't quite bringing that level of intensity. So uh, at 0-2, Panthers taking some money early. And yeah, I mean... Markets are moving to three in some spots here. I, I just don't know that the broader market's going to do it. Uh, I like to give you clear opinions on where the line's going to move, and this is one 
that I feel like it can't hold at three, and you grab the three now uh, with Arizona. But uh, that's just a gut opinion, and, and there's you know there are more two and a halfs than three as we speak, and uh, this isn't this isn't like uh, the you know where all right if you want to get into your two and a half you better get down now. Uh, this is one that it might be at three, and you know I uh, wouldn't. Again, I, I lean towards Arizona here, so I'm, I'm probably going to put some three in my pocket as soon as we get done talking. All right, Teddy, nice stuff there. We got New Orleans at Seattle, and of course with the Drew Brees uh, hand injury, what, what, what's going on there? Uh, any quick thoughts here? I am seeing a four and a half that Seattle laying at home at Circa, but uh, other than that, not really seeing m- many numbers up at all with the Saints and the Seahawks. Look ahead line was one. Obviously, that's with Drew Brees healthy. I made a five point adjustment from Brees to Teddy Bridgewater, and with that five point adjustment, my line came out Seattle minus five. So uh, we'll see how the markets react. Yeah, I'm seeing four and a half slash five and a half out there uh, right now for the books that do have a line uh, on this ballgame. It does not appear as if Drew Brees is going to play this week. It's likely to be Teddy Bridgewater. And Bridgewater was okay yesterday. He wasn't a backup quarterback disaster of any stretch of the imagination. But Drew Brees is pretty good. And without him, this is obviously a major loss uh, for New Orleans. We'll see how that thumb turns out. Now, we should have more news on that, I believe, later today or tomorrow. All right, Teddy, we got four eight three four eight four up next. Houston Texans at the, well, because I'm thinking of it, the L.A. Chargers. Chargers laying three at home, 47.5 the total. Look ahead line here was 3.5. My powering number is four. I'm actually a little bit surprised this guy in line has gone back down to three. The Chargers misleading final scores each of the first two weeks. And you say maybe that's the Chargers. You know, they threw a pick in the end zone week one. They fumbled at the one-yard line. How many touchdowns did they have called back in Detroit yesterday? I felt like there was a dozen. Uh, but I know there was like three on the same drive. They had two touchdowns called back on the same drive, and they got the first and goal at the one, and Justin Jackson fumbled, uh, which is oops. And then Detroit steals it at the end and is oops. You know, and that's the one where, the, you know, the, the pros beat the Joes in that game. Uh, there are some concerns about the Chargers, but – uh, again, from a box score standpoint, this team's been moving the ball up and down the field. The defense has been solid. There's there's things to life. And the Texans, uh, like, Texans defense didn't work. They got pretty lucky to escape with that win against, or the offense didn't work. Uh, they got pretty lucky to escape against the uh, Jaguars. Um, so, again, my number says this should, uh, should be a notch higher, but the money today has come for Houston. So, I'm not going to tell you to rush to the window to uh, bet LA at three. Um, I mean, it's not going to go below three, so it's not going to hurt you to bet three, but it's still three with juice uh, on the Chargers, and the initial lean has gone the other way. So uh, if you find the Chargers at three minus 110, that might be something to lock in sooner rather than later. All right, Teddy, next game up, we got Pittsburgh at San Francisco. Real limited marketplace here. Any quick thoughts with the Steelers and 49ers? Well, yeah, the report I just read before we came on air with Big Ben out for the year, which is pretty significant. Uh, Look at line here with Pittsburgh minus one and a half. My Mason Rudolph power rating has San Fran minus six and a half. I love it that the Niners came through easy yesterday. I'm disappointed that they came through so easy. I feel like I've lost some value with San Fran. They were one of my, you know, bigger under the radar money makers. We cashed with them week one. We cashed with them week two. You know, um, uh, I think this line is going to come six, six and a half, seven in that range where my powering number is. And that's a disappointing number to me. Although, whew. If you watch that San Fran offense, <laughs> you know, Kyle Shanahan pulled up all kinds of stuff from his bag of tricks. And I don't know what the Steelers' mentality is. All that said, here it is. You're 0-2 against your 2-0. and There will be wise guy support for Pittsburgh in this game at some point during the week. Teddy, we got the L.A. Rams at the Cleveland Browns up next. And, of course, another limited marketplace here with Cleveland playing tonight. But we got 2.5 or 3. That's the Rams laying on the road. 51 the total. Yeah, look headline was Rams minus one and a half. My powering numbers, Cleveland minus one. Like I, you know, I'm, I'm high on this Browns team. Uh, I am. I'm off market on the Browns team, and I don't care. Um, we'll see. We'll, we'll see if I have to adjust after tonight. Uh, but right now, I'm higher than the markets on uh, Cleveland. But uh, uh, this line likely to be significantly affected by what we see this evening. If the Browns come out and kill them, uh, they ain't going to be plus three at home. Uh, if the Browns come out and look like they did last week, shoot, this line could be three. I don't. I still don't think it gets to three and a half. So the bottom line is not gonna. If you like Cleveland for as bad as Cleveland looked last week, if the Cleveland's look bad again tonight, I still don't think the line's gonna crash on them. 
Uh, you may want to take the plus three uh, with the Browns uh, now because I'm not convinced that'll be there. All right, we got one game left here, Teddy. And guys, remember the coupon code TC795 at checkout for Teddy Cover's full season NFL and college football season at sportsmemo.com for an extra 300 bucks off for a total of $500 off. Coupon code TC795 at checkout. And, of course, 59% in the NFL since 2015 and off to a 65% start in college football and the NFL overall this year. So year-to-date numbers are very impressive from Teddy Covers. Shows no signs of stop. And check it out at sportsmemo.com. Coupon code TC795. Full season NFL and college football at checkout. Monday night or four next week. Any quick thoughts here? Chicago at Washington. Seeing 41 and a half being the total, Teddy. Four or four and a half. That's the Bears laying on the road. Yeah, I mean, look, the NFL has been real good to me uh, so far this year, and it's mostly right sides, which is even nicer. You know, I lost the opener. I had the Bears in the opener against the Packers, and I literally I haven't lost a bet since uh, in the NFL. Even the free play one yesterday with the, the <laughs> Cowboys Redskins over. So I mean, it's been it's been real good, and college was real good. You know, we split out the first couple of weeks this last week with another uh, was a strong winning week in uh, college football. So uh, you know, the work that we put in over the summer is paying off now. Uh, and that's, you know, and it's not like, not like we're not working now. <laughs> I don't know about you, uh, Drew, but I got big bags under my eyes uh, on a Monday morning and I'm double caffeinated <laughs> to uh, <laughs> uh, get through the day. Uh, but look, Bears and the Redskins, this line has to go up. It's going to go up. If you like Chicago, bet them right now. The three and a halfs are already coming off. It's fours are popping up. Four and a halfs are popping up. Nobody's going to want the Redskins. The look ahead line was four and a half uh, on Chicago. My powering number is four and a half. Uh, on Chicago, and the markets will be at four and a half on Chicago by kickoff, I would think. Uh, so, uh, if you like the Bears, don't uh, don't delay. There's still three and a half out there. They won't be there for long, in my opinion. The Redskins haven't shown a lot to be particularly excited about. But I mean, look, and I'll give uh, I'll give Case Keenum some credit for chucking the football around. It's not like the Bears' offense has been uh, anything to be excited about. Uh, but you know, Adrian Peterson, uh, what do you have? Ten for eighteen yesterday? Was that it? I know, you know, he was a non-factor on the ground and a non-factor in the passing game. And when you're completely one-dimensional like Washington is right now, you can't run the football at all, that's likely to be a problem against the Bears' defense. All right. He's Teddy Covers. We'll have him back on later in the week on the College Football Every Game on the Board podcast. So stay tuned for that on Wednesday and Thursday. We also got the NFL Every Game on the podcast on Friday. So, guys, uh, good week ahead. We got – a lot of football action ahead and basketball not too far around the corner. So busy times here for sports betters. Always appreciate you guys tuning in each and every Monday. NFL opening line report with Teddy Covers and the coupon code TC795. Full season NFL and college football at checkout sportsmemo.com. Guys, thanks for tuning in. Best of luck with your bets.